Welcome to Comics with Dan. We're going to be reviewing Flash Gordon number one. So the extent of my knowledge on Flash Gordon is uh, the theme song from the original show by Queen. My initial impressions are that Flash is a swashbuckling adventurer, and uh, that was confirmed by the Free Comic Book Day issue and this issue here. It was a fun book to read with some really excellent art by Will Conrad and Lee Lowridge. My experience with Jeremy Adams has been on his Flash run. My impression of his work that I've read is that he likes to write really charismatic or at least presenting to be charismatic. Uh, Hal Jordan in his first couple of issues of Green Lantern was a bit much in my opinion. Male leads like Wally and Hal and now this stays consistent with Flash Gordon. My understanding is that this is true to character but feel free to correct me in the comments if that's not how the original Flash Gordon was. As the solicit suggests, we don't get the charismatic, charming Flash Gordon right at the beginning because he's imprisoned on another planet, but he's restored to his former glory by the end of the issue. This story feels a little more serious than what I'm used to seeing Jeremy Adams write, uh, but he still did it really well. I mean, I do hope that we get back to some of the more comical stuff that we saw in his Flash run, but he still writes a serious uh, adventure story pretty well. Jeremy Adams has set up a pretty interesting story to follow. My only worry is that Defenders of the Earth is going to be required reading. The small preview of Defenders of the Earth and at the end of this issue, as well as the free comic book day issue, all really seem to tie together, which I do like the fact that it's a you know cohesive story, but I don't know that it's going to really retain readers if they have to buy all the books in the line. Thankfully, I think it's just going to be Flash Gordon, then the quarterly Flash Gordon books, as well as Defenders of the Earth. So hopefully that's not too much stress on the reader to be able to keep up with everything. While this issue shows flashback pages to some of the more pivotal stuff that happened in the Free Comic Book Day issue, I don't know that it provides the full background that I really enjoyed having since I read the Free Comic Book Day issue before this one. So I would recommend reading the Free Comic Book Day issue, then Flash Gordon number one, but you don't absolutely have to if you're unable to. There's a code in this book as well that will take the reader right to the Free Comic Book Day issue to read it online. The story overall was fun. I don't think it was anything jaw-dropping or crazy, but it was really action-packed. It was kind of exactly what I was expecting from Flash Gordon, sort of just this swashbuckling, exciting adventure. Uh, I, it's definitely enough to keep me on the hook for issue number two. Will Conrad and Lee Lowridge have some really great art in this book. The book starts slowly in the sense that there's not a lot of action in the beginning, but about a third of the way through the story, it's like a switch flips and we get thrown into this space epic with Flash Gordon taking the helm. The action in the story, along with the really dynamic paneling, uh, really makes the action more explosive. It makes the art explode off the page. Uh, really great work uh, kind of putting a cohesive book together. In this page here, the dark shading used on Flash contrasted against the surrounding gunfire, the slanted panels down to the detail of Dino Drool make this a heart-pounding action sequence. I like Lowridge's color choices, and I think they complement Will Conrad's art really well. When the series was announced, I was expecting a little more eccentric and brighter colors being used and a little more cartoony art style, but I do think that Conrad and Lowridge have a really good style here that fits the adventure side of this book very well. The letters by Taylor Esposito were really well done. Uh, we got letters for uh, a robot speaking differently than the humans, uh, and the subtle changes whenever Flash is kind of weaker and unable to speak versus when he's speaking at full voice. One of my favorite lettering techniques is when the actual speech bubble itself is modified based on how the character is speaking, uh, whether it's crumbling when they're speaking in a weaker voice or whenever it's exploding off the page whenever they're yelling or screaming. Uh, it's just it's one of my favorite techniques, and uh, Esposito does that a few times here, which I liked. There are a ton of sound effects, which I think that in a, an adventure book like this, that's extremely important, and I think they were really well done and I, I always love sound effects they're just always a great addition for me flash gordon number one is definitely good enough to grab the attention of readers and get them to pull onto issue number two uh, it's it's the swashbuckling space adventure that you had hoped for uh, it's the one that i hoped for at least and i think that adams and crew are uh, lining up to do a really great run here
If you're on the fence as to whether or not to check this book out, absolutely go for it. It'll be worth your time. Make sure you like the video, make sure that you subscribe, check out my other videos here, and thank you for watching.